share this. I'll, I'll share this. Like uh, um, even my my circumstance, it, it's it's the burden of, and you can find attractive women mm-hmm. everywhere, right? But then there's got to be some more substance be- beyond looks, especially mm-hmm. yes. when you're dealing with person of value that has status and have influence. They're going to have certain needs that are are mandatory that they're met, and so the dilemma that I find myself always cycling through is that the attractive women are there. But then when I start to talk to you, okay, if I ask you questions and they're not being answered and then yeah. you can't articulate why you think I'm attacking you. <laughs> like, so, so for instance, I was, I was on a date with a lady yeah. and I just told her, Hey, I like you a lot. You just don't talk enough. Like she, she, and she was a lawyer. Yeah. So, so okay. I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> and were you really like picking at her brain, trying to she, get her to open up? Yeah, like... And, and like, I get it. Women want to be comfortable. And they want to feel that they're trusted, and they Mess want the to. Camera. They they want to be able to be vulnerable with no judgment and this thing. That's a whole another conversation talking about judgment. Yep. <laughs> judgment is sitting in the place of uh, repercussion and correction. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, I can't judge you, but we use that so freely. We say, "Oh, you're judging me." No, we assess things as mm-hmm. human beings and then make rash decision. So there's the, a reason the, why I'm laughing. The the the, the, the dilemma. <laughs> Going, here. is that Sorry. you get in these conversations with a attractive woman and you just say hey up the road if you're not talking to me and not inquiring me and i have to engage you in every conversation yes. first that's going to be draining secondly i'm not going to think that uh you have a desire and i'm not going to use i don't like when i hear men say feel a lot uh, men act on what they see and what they think mm-hmm. Not saying that men don't have feelings, but men are supposed to execute something called rational deduction. And what that is, is not just acting on feelings. It's like being rational of like, okay, is this person really attacking me Mm. or is this really a concern up the road? Yeah. And so what happens, I have to take a switch of like explaining no hun i'm not attacking you i'm just saying you don't talk a lot and you're nasty to waiters and people like that yeah imagine what i do you're mean to con- people from the congregation you're, yeah. you're you're not nice to people and and it's it should be easy to be nice to people go ahead i want to i want to add to that there is nothing more attract unattractive than someone that's rude to like waiters or staff amen and it's crazy they someone can be so nice to you and i've had that multiple times so nice well because obviously they want something but don't look at someone for how they act towards you because they want something from you right. notice how someone treats someone else yeah. right that yeah. they don't want anything from because that's when they don't want anything from you anymore hmm. or you know that's you need wise. them more than they need yeah. you Go ahead, Gypsy. Yeah, Go I'm ahead, serious. Gypsy. Though yeah. I know it is such a turnoff when people are, are rude and how they treat another person. Yeah, it's so important. I want to also ask you, Doug. Have you noticed people? How do people take criticism, like in, where you work or around you? If someone says, "Oh, you should be better at this or work on this," are, do people take that nowadays in our society? Or have you noticed? Uh, it's funny that you say that. Just last night, I had uh, so I bartend right now, and okay. I had so we just. Uh, promoted uh one of the hostesses to become a bar back and it's funny she goes you know i didn't really like you at first but you've grown a lot on me i was like well why didn't you like me she goes oh i remember like i was hearing you guys talk to like me and my other co-workers you said hosts are at the bottom of the totem pole i was like well that's something you know you took personally i didn't say you were at, the, at the bottom, bottom of the total oh uh, the hosts in the oh, restaurant industry she took it which yeah and i wasn't like attacking her at all and i don't even remember the actual like context of like the discussion that we were having with me and my bartenders but anyone who's been in the service industry hosts is that if you don't have any experience you're at the host stand right. and, and then not, you work up and then you woke up to it's wait it's assist the truth i bartend now i started at expo that's like the if anyone the expo is the dude who's like taking down the food and setting it down on the place. I expo that whole set. I've been at the bottom of the total pole. I wasn't like seeing it as an insult or anything towards anyone. It just, it is what it is. When you're an inch, it's an entry level position to get in the service industry. Yeah. I worked through it and got my way up. Everyone's done it. But she took that personally, like I was judging her yeah. or attacking her. I was like, we, you weren't even a part of the conversation. Right. Like what? Is it your own insecurities yeah. or your own defensiveness exactly. that that made you feel that way? Like, and if you're a host, I know a lot of people that just love hosting. Yeah. I wasn't trying to knock it down, like you know, or 
servers are like better than hosts in any yeah. way shape or form yeah there's a lot of just like trash servers and bartenders out there too right. you know so i know i don't think people take criticism very well at all nowadays and i think if like having a friends around you that criticize you and keep you on your shit is the best thing accountability. Um, this yeah guy. accountability so, so 